Time now for a little art interlude for you. And one of the most powerful anti-war artworks in the world is Guernica by Pablo Picasso. That monumental canvas is on display in Madrid, but the Picasso Museum here in Paris is now featuring an in-depth show into Guernica's history. To tell us a bit more about all of that, I'm joined on the set today by Dr. Amanda Harold marm from the private art tour company Paris Muse. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Jeannie. Now, you are also an expert on Spanish art and politics. You also contributed several essays to this exhibition's Cadillac, so you're well placed to tell us about Guernica. First of all, give us its, its history. Well, Jeannie, Guer Guernica was created in 1937 right here in Paris by Pablo Picasso in response to the Spanish Civil War. Now, this war begins in 1936 when a group of right wing generals launch a military coup against the legally elected government of the Second Spanish Republic. At a significant military disadvantage, this government relies heavily on cultural forms to ensure its defense, and that's where Guernica comes in. So Picasso paints Guernica in response to a commission by the government for a large-scale mural painting, which is meant to be the centerpiece for the Spanish pavilion in the 1937 World's Fair. Um, this was a golden opportunity for the government to really uh, garner international support for its cause. Picasso was the logical choice to do the centerpiece for uh, the pavilion. He'd been living in France for over 30 years. He'd acquired international fame and fortune. However, before 1936, Picasso kept out of politics. The Spanish Civil War really is the catalyst for his political engagement, and Guernica is its first manifestation on the world stage. And that's what the exhibition at the Picasso Museum is about. Now, there's a lot of politically engaged art out there that many of have, have, have seen, particularly about the Spanish Civil War at that time. But what sets Guernica apart? Why is it considered the most important political painting of all, all time, almost? Well, Picasso really, he's eager to show his support for the Republic, but he really struggles with finding a subject. And he finally finds inspiration when he reads news in the French press of the bombing of the Basque village of Guernica on April 26, 1937. Now, this was a particularly atrocious crime in the Spanish Civil War. Guernica was the spiritual capital of the Basque country. It had absolutely no military or strategic importance. And it was bombed by the Nazi and fascist aviation with, at the behest of the nationalist forces on a market day to ensure a maximum number of civilian casualties. Picasso, upon learning the news of this bombing, embarks on a series of carefully cataloged and dated preliminary paintings and drawings that ultimately culminate in his masterpiece. And his progress is documented in photography by Dora Maar, his companion at the time. Uh, Guernica is really a synthesis of 40 years of Picasso's work. Uh, he represents on a large scale the tragedy and devastation of the bombing through several main characters, a horse, a bull, a warrior, and several women, including a woman holding a dead child. And these characters are inspired by various sources, including Spanish culture. Um, you know, Picasso uh, typically had already in his work used the horse and the bull, which are the protagonists of the bullfight, an important Spanish tradition, and the exhibition shows how the bullfight uh, is, is a pr predominant theme in his work even prior to 1936 and the outbreak of the war. Um, he doesn't include any partisan symbols or any direct reference to time or space, which gives the work a very universal quality. Also, um, he uses a, a personal avant-gardist style. Uh, his, he uses cubism, a mix of cubism with its fractured forms and its multiple perspectives, and a deformative surrealism, which give the work, which contribute to the violence and the anguish and the confusion of the scene, as well as to its originality. Now, surprisingly, maybe for some of our viewers or people who even go to the exhibit, is that the actual massive work, Ganica itself, isn't on display at this exhibit at the Picasso Museum in Paris. That's true. Um, and the reason for that is because after the World's Fair, Guernica travels the world. It goes to Scandinavia, England, and then on tour in the United States, where it lands ultimately at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 1939. It later goes on tour again through Europe in the 1950s, but Picasso refuses that it go to Spain as long as Franco's dictatorship is in place. And that's why Guernica only travels to Spain for the first time in 1981 after Franco's death and Spain's transition to democracy. Since 1992, it's been the centerpiece of, of Madrid's Reina Sofia Museum. Uh, but having traveled so much, it's in delicate condition and it can't travel anymore. So then what makes this ex exhibition in Paris so special? And what might people be able to see there that they couldn't see anywhere else? 
It's true that Picasso's work is well represented in many Parisian collections, the Pompidou Center, the Orangery Museum, and of course the Picasso Museum, but what we can't usually see in Paris is Picasso's politically engaged work. Uh, what's really special about and innovative about this exhibit is that it replaces Guernica in its Parisian context, mm -hmm. uh, Paris, where Picasso made a name for himself and also where his wo work took on this political d dimension uh, following the 80th anniversary of the work's creation. This is made possible thanks to an exceptional loan of preparatory sketches and drawings and archives from the Reina Sofia Museum, which have never been on display in Paris before. Mm -hmm. Also on display are works by Picasso's compatriots from the so-called Spanish School of Paris, Juan Miró and the sculptor Julio González, who, like Picasso, create moving, politically charged works to show their solidarity and support for democratic Spain uh, that are displayed in the 1937 World's Fair. The exhibit ends with uh, contemporary works inspired by Guernica, which show the extraordinary impact that this work continues to have this day as a universal icon and pacifist symbol. Amanda, thank you so much. And if you are in Paris, any of you watching, you can go check out Guernica. That exhibition is on until July 29th. Amanda, thank you so much to you as well. You can also, if you're interested in getting a tour of some of Paris's incredible museums with Amanda or any of the other great art educators or guides at Paris Muse, you can do that too. Just check out their website. It's parismuse.com.